Hello, welcome to this video on misconceptions with Gothic horror writing. This video is going to take you through some of the problems that students have with this particular type of writing. Now, before we look at the problems, we're going to give you an example of a really, really bad piece of writing. Now, the writing is quite accurate and it shows a number of skills. But the problem is this person has misunderstood how to write a horror story. And we're going to kind of talk you through the problems that the students got with this writing. First of all, I'm going to read it through to you and then I'm going to talk to you about the problems that it's got. The dark, gloomy, scary, haunted room was cold. It had a spooky and eerie atmosphere. I could smell rotting flesh. The floorboards creaked under my footsteps. I saw blood dripping from the ceiling. I felt the hairs on the back of my neck tingle and shiver down my spine. It got colder. My teeth were chattering so hard you could hear them. Bang, my heart stopped. My heart literally stopped. A book had fallen on the dusty floor. I continued to walk even though my legs had turned to jelly. I was scared. Suddenly, my hand was grabbed by something or someone. My heart skipped a beat. I saw the zombie's face and its teeth and okay so that's the bad example now in terms of writing pretty good there's some good description um, there's variety in sentences punctuation is secure and there's some good things in there the problem is is that it doesn't make it good effective writing and that's what we're looking for you can write really really well but still have not very effective writing. So we're going to look at some of the problems here and we're going to show you some problems that we want you to avoid in your writing. Problem number one. Problem number one is all at the beginning here. Scary, haunted, spooky and eerie. Problem number one links into the words that we use. Students often do this with their writing by describing something as spooky and eerie. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Does it make it sound like a scary environment? No, it doesn't. And you using the word eerie and spooky, scary and haunted doesn't make it scary. In fact, it makes it the opposite and it seems quite predictable. And actually what we've got here is actually lazy writing. By using scary, you're using that word instead of other words that you could use to, do, to make the place seem scary. All right, you're just using that to save yourself time. And so we want you to not use scary, haunted, spooky and eerie. And I'd say the best writers don't use those words at all. They suggest it's that without actually using those words. Problem number two. Smelling rotting flesh, blood dripping. OK, what often happens with students is they throw these grim bits of detail into the writing. So rotting flesh, zombies, blood dripping. Now, these are things we associate with horror and often they can be used effectively but if we have a look in the writing, where are they done and where are they used? Straight away, the first paragraph, we have got this. Does that show the writer building up and trying to build and create an atmosphere? No. Again, what it is, is it's lazy writing. Oh, if I put rotting flesh and the smell, that will make it seem creepy. If I put blood dripping, it will make it seem creepy. It doesn't really. And actually, it makes it not as effective as it could be. Problem number three. Problem number three is one that we're all guilty of. And that's because when we're writing, we use things that are in our brain and phrases that are in our brain. And there's a word for it called cliches. 
and cliches are kind of like your stereotypes in writing. They're the things that everybody uses when describing things. So I'll give you a good example. If I say, if you had to describe grass, most people would say grass is green. And that shows you, that is a cliche, because in our brains, we automatically associate grass with being green. And so in our brain, we're wired to having these cliches. And what good students do is they kind of move away from these cliches. And there's quite a number in this piece of writing. And I'm going to highlight a few now. So we've got floorboards creaked. There's one cliche. OK, felt the hairs on the back of my neck tingle. Another cliche. Shiver down my spine. My heart literally stopped. My legs turned to jelly. My heart skipped a beat. So you can see that I've got lots of cliches and they're all describing a lot of the time feelings and actually you know pretty predictable writing. The problem is that it's again it's lazy writing. Is it effective? And it's not really effective because it's not original. We're kind of like oh we know what's going to happen, oh they're scared. And so we need to avoid that kind of writing. Now the fourth thing is this. Number four is this, bang, suddenly. Now we call these in horror films, we call them jump scares. And a jump scare is when you get something go boo every so often. And actually in films, it's quite lazy directing. And it's just there to just scare people. And you notice that horror films Hopefully you've not watched any, but in the horror films, they tend to have lots of jump scares. You know, open a cupboard, something falls out. Suddenly a bang against the window. And it really is, again, cheap and lazy because what it's doing is trying to scare people quickly, but not very effectively. OK, so here, bang. All right. Some books had fallen on the floor. Suddenly somebody grabbed the hand. It's quick and it's lazy. So we need to avoid this sort of thing. All right. And so using an onomatopoeia or going suddenly and suddenly is a very, very lazy way to do it. And that's what suddenly people use in their writing. So there are four things that we want you to avoid with your writing. So number one, using empty adjectives, scary, haunted, spooky, eerie. Number two, using grotesque things in the first paragraph. Number three, cliches. And number the four, jump scares. So what are the misconceptions? Where do students go wrong with this? Well, this is where they go wrong. They think every line in a horror story must be scary. And that's not the case. They think that You've got to keep having surprises. Bang, crash, suddenly. No, you don't need to have lots of surprises. Another thing they get wrong is they have to tell the reader it's scary all, right? all the time. Look how scary it is. It's a haunted house. It's very, very scary. There's rotting things there. It's very, very scary. That isn't effective writing. Pretty rubbish writing, if we're honest. And they rush things. OK, they want to get to the zombie. And so that is a problem because what good horror writers like Stephen King, what they do is they slow things down and they build up to the scare. They don't throw the scare in straight away. Another thing students do is try to describe everything, every single thing, every sound, everything. It's not needed. And again, what students often do is use cliched writing, which is boring, predictable writing. And remember, it's the first thing that comes to mind. I'm thinking back about that. Uh, what color is grass? Green. It's we in our brain. We've already got these cliches already wired into our brain. So we use those phrases again and again. Now, let's show you a good example. Now, after I've read this, I'd like you to pause the video and copy this story down before I explain to you why it's so effective.
effective because we're going to annotate it together and you can see for yourself what makes it so good and what are the sort of things that you need to do in your writing to make it better. The room was still. Nothing moved. Nothing. Not even the air. I paused and wondered whether to go on or not. Something wasn't quite right. I don't know what, but I couldn't feel, put my finger on it. Here I was, in your average bedroom. Posters, wardrobe, clothes on the floor, books from school. Average. Normal. In fact, it was typical for a teenager. But still, there was something not quite right. I decided to move on to a different room. And then I discovered why it wasn't right. If this was supposed to be a typical teenager's bedroom, then why was there no window? Pause the video and copy that story down. OK, now I'm going to talk to you about why this is a good example and why does it work against some of those misconceptions, those problems that students have? Well, the first thing is, is that at the beginning, there's no fact that this room is creepy. All we've got is a sentence and a couple of sentences that build up the atmosphere. And if we look at the first line, it's all about atmosphere. So we get this idea that the place was still. And if it still could suggest that there's something not quite right, and the fact that the air's not moving, that creates what we call an unsettled feeling. That there's something not quite right. And you can see that the repetition of nothing there helps that, and this idea that the air's not moving. Then we get this line here. I paused and wondered whether to go on or not. So we've got our narrator deciding whether to move on. Now, if you remember on that bad example, we had that my heart skipped a beat and I did that. Here we've got simply what's going on in the person's mind. And we're not using any cliches. They're just pausing and wondered whether to go on. So they're debating. Now, often in horror stories and ghost stories, you have the narrator deciding, shall I move on? Shall I go into the dangerous area or not? So we've got that bit there without going too much into the scares on it. But then we have, again, this unsettled feeling. So from that beginning bit, something wasn't quite right. And so we've got this idea that something's not quite right. And we've got this idea of being vague. We don't know what's wrong about this place. Here I was in your average bedroom, posters, wardrobe, clothes on the floor, books from school, average. In fact, it was typical. Now, we have a look here. Average, typical. Now, usually when you're writing like the bad example, you're trying to make it seem really scary and really worse. But here, what we've got is something normal. And the environment, the setting, is all trying to be normal and trying to make it. And in fact, all of us can identify in bedrooms, can't we, with posters, wardrobe, clothes on the floor. So we've got this idea that there's something not quite right, but we don't know what. That is far more powerful than having rotten corpses and blood everywhere. In fact, you're kind of playing with people's minds. And that's what this writer is doing here. They're kind of saying there's something not quite right but you can't tell what it is. And that's a powerful skill to use as a writer because you're playing games, you're playing tricks with the reader. You're trying to go, look, there's something not quite right, but what is it? And that's what we've got here because it's saying, this is a normal bedroom, what, what's not right here? Come on, see if you can work it out. But still, there was something not quite right. So again, not about you, but reading this first time round, getting really, really frustrated about what's going on. Tell us what is so scary about this place. Come on, I can't work it out. This is really, really powerful stuff because we're not suddenly going, there's a zombie in the corner of the room. That's why it's scary. 
we're kind of trying to work it out there's something not right then we go back to the narrator i decided to move on to a different room and then i discovered why it wasn't right okay so they've worked out why but we haven't and then look at this bit here we could have suddenly gone bang then it hit me or suddenly i realized and this is a bit bit low key then discovered why it wasn't right and again we've got that mystery so now he knows or she knows but we don't and then finally in the last line we have this if this was supposed to be a typical teenager bedroom then why was there no window and if you look the clue was there at the beginning that there was no air in the room so it gives this and actually we've got this kind of cliffhanger we don't know why would there be a bedroom with no window what is the reason behind that and what you're actually doing is building on the power of imagination and now when we get to the end of this we're not just going it's scary but we're thinking why why has this happened what's going on yeah. right let's revisit those misconceptions then now that we've looked at those two examples so the key thing is not every line needs to be scary you need to not have too many surprises and actually don't tell the writer it's scary kind of give clues that it's scary rather than just going it is a scary place and slow down you don't need to rush to the scary bits and actually part of the fun with reading horror and gothic horror and ghost stories is the build-up the build-up to that scariness is much more powerful than jump scares um, and don't describe everything in great detail this example the good example didn't have much about the bedroom just a few things just enough to give us an idea a sense and avoid cliche writing so in your writing and your story think about giving hints and clues suggest something bad is going to happen and actually use the reader's imagination actually think about how the reader will react in this story